as you can see here, I have prepared all of my pieces. They've all been removed from the sprues and sorted according to color. I have them all ready to be painted. So what I like to do first is to get this body started. So this is going to have to go into primer, and that's going to have to cure, and then it's going to have to go into color, and that's going to have to cure, and then we're going to have to clear coat it, and that's going to have to cure, and then we're going to have to wet sand it and polish it. So there's a lot of work here that has to be done on the body, and we can get this process started so that while all of the pieces are curing, we can move on to painting and assembly of the other parts. And by the time we get through in the instructions to the step where we're ready for this body, hopefully we can be prepared and have the body ready to go. So the first thing, this is right out of the box. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I like to give it a scuff up with a 600 grit sandpaper. Sandpaper is uh, plentiful and cheap can be had anywhere find some in the garage find some somewhere just make sure it's 600 grit don't go at this with 6000 grit you'll be here all day don't go at it with 60 grit there'll be nothing left the lower the number the more substantial the sandpaper is the harder it is the more material it removes and really we're only doing this to um, rough up the surface for the clear coat excuse me for the paint and the primer to stick to uh, the primer likes to have a nice, um, a bit of a key, they call it, a key to the surface. So a little bit rough. I'm also looking for mold uh, lines or any kind of manufacturing lines, but i got to tell you, they're real slight if they're there at all. The only thing I can find is I can find one right here on top of this fender. Right there I see one. And then obviously on the other side, the mirror image. But other than that, I don't see I don't see any lines on this thing at all. It's incredible. Um, they did a nice job on this. So this guy here, um, I don't know. Oh, maybe it is. I didn't think the 600 was going to be enough to get rid of it. But uh, you know what? The 600 is doing a nice job of getting rid of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this down. And j again, just to rough up the surface just like that and now you see how it's flat instead of shiny so now paint will stick to it a lot better primer will stick to it see that's shiny right there and then this is flat we want the flat so the primer will stick to that real nice and it's real smooth also so um, then after I'm done sanding this it goes into the kitchen sink and I wash it with Dawn dishwashing detergent that removes all wax, all grease, all anything that's going to make paint go ping, 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 ping. And you get little fish eyes. You get little spots where the paint won't stick. Um, they, uh, the dishwashing soap cleans it, removes all mold release agent, and gets it down to just bare plastic. Then, once it dries thoroughly, I will go ahead and shoot it with a coat of primer. And I will have you back for that. So I will go and get to work on these parts and this. They all get washed. And I'll have you back. The body has been wet sanded, well sanded, and then washed in Dawn dishwashing detergent and rinsed with warm water. Not boiling hot water, but warm water. So now we don't want to touch that too much because it's ready to go. So we're going to put it on this stand. So I'm going to very carefully take it and put those metal pieces in there. Now that will hold the body, but I always like to do it just one step further and give it a slight, um, a little bit of piece of tape on the inside here just to keep it. From coming off because if this is painted up nice and then it falls off of this stand then you've got a problem. You damage the paint finish. We can't damage the paint finish. So there, now that's on there. And that ain't going anywhere. Now if you don't have a beautiful stand like this, you can use a simple soda can. Believe it or not, they work just marvelously. And then all of these parts, it's a matter of your personal preference. Um, I ordinarily just mount a hood flat on a piece of tape and then I'll paint the reverse side later but for right now we can just do this side 
So what I'll do is and I'll take a piece of tape. And I'll put it like this. Not really cooperating with me here. Mostly because the camera is in the way. And then I'll take this and I'll go like that. Done. And then the rear end, I'll do the same thing. Like that. And it's done. There we go. And then I can take this one and this one. The firewall, radiator wall, or slam panel as some people call it. And there's that, ready to be done. Oh, I almost forgot these guys. Can't forget those guys. And this guy. These hinges I'll probably just paint on my own. So there's those guys ready to go. And this is ready to go for primer. Well, through a camera error, I actually wasn't recording when I sprayed my primer. So it was like this. And it was just full strokes side to side to side and then I rotate it around in full strokes from all 360 degrees from the front and that's the result and the parts what I did with them I did basically the same thing just like this and then bring it around like this bring it around this way so that I get it from all angles and this way and if you look you don't see any missed parts all the parts are coated with the primer so now this is orange enamel from the testers model set And we're going to just start brush painting it. Wow, I haven't brush painted a part in forever. This is actually kind of fun. Takes a little time. Now, if you remember correctly, this is a two-color part. This part is orange, and that part is silver. Now I will most likely paint this oil filter another color later, but for right now I'm going to paint it all orange. Now since this is a part that's going to be able to be seen, I want to touch it up at the end with nice flat strokes like this. And the enamel will level out and smooth out as it cures. I'd like to point out that I'm not going to paint every part on camera. They all paint pretty much the same. I'm going to show you the orange part of the block here. I'm going to show you the, the part where I paint the silver transmission. The rest of the parts that are brush painted are done so in the exact same way, following the exact same techniques. There it is.
Nope, missed a spot. There. Done with the orange. So now to clean up your brushes. We're done with orange for now. So we need a little bit of thinner. So here's our thinner. Which is basically the same thing as I have in here. Just this stuff is older and dirtier. Keep in mind also that lacquer thinner and enamel thinner both is nasty, nasty stuff. You should use it with adequate ventilation and don't get any on your hands. Clean brush. And now that the orange has cured on the block, I'm going to get going with some silver for the other parts that are to be silver slash aluminum in the kit, as well as the other half of this part, the transmission. This is all going to be brush painted in this clip. some of the little parts are curing we can move on with the body uh, the primer has cured fully and it has been wet sanded I do a 600 grit wet sand after my primer before I put the color coat on just to remove any little bits and pieces of stuff that might have fallen in it or to uh, get it just to be a little bit smoother if the primer had cured with any kind of orange peel which it usually doesn't but if it had or like I said if something gets into it it's nice to be able to remove it uh, and then, so now I'm going to spray. We're in a spray booth. I know that everybody might not have a spray booth. Uh, a spray booth is really easy to make. If you do some Googling and uh, some searching on YouTube, there's a lot of really great uh, homemade spray booths. Do make sure that you take the proper safety precautions. Uh, you know, if you don't have a spray booth, spray outside. Uh, there's nothing wrong with running outside. Spray, 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 run back inside. Uh, keep in mind, too, that the parts will gas off for a while. Um... They, it's called gassing out or off-gassing. That's what happens while the paint is curing. So if you paint it outside and then you run into the house and the house is a sealed up, closed up room, um, then it's going to stink up the house. So you're going to want to have it in a, in a warm space. I know that it, uh, it's winter now in some parts. Um, you're going to want to have it in a warm place. You're going to want to be able to uh, have the odors evacuate. Even a bathroom with a bathroom fan would work. Um, but do make sure you take the proper safety precautions. Wear a paint mask, a spray mask. Don't inhale these vapors. Very light coats, as you see me doing. Uh, don't put a lot of paint on. You'll get a run. So very light mist coats, just as I'm doing here. And you'll get a great result. This is going to wrap up video number three in the beginner how-to with the Revell 1970 Dodge Charger RT. Go ahead and click that subscribe button in the upper left. I'll have some links to some videos here as well for you. Thank you for following along. I hope you'll come back and join me for video number four when we start moving toward assembly with the 1970 Dodge Charger RT from Revell. Thank you.